Keith Richards, one of the biggest guitar heroes in the history of rock and one of its wildest stars. There are countless stories going around about Richards. In this video, we'll take a look at five of the weirdest from the bunch. Are they urban legends? Are they actually true? Hello, Top Potters. This is Sam Amas, your friend with a master degree in musicology and composition and a huge respect for Captain Jack Teague. The story is that Keith Richards came home one day with a box. Inside the box, the cremated remains of his father. Allegedly, Keith opened the box and snorted his father's ashes. <gasps> it was Richards himself sharing this intimate family story with the world in a 2007 enemy interview. Asked about the strangest drug he had ever taken, the Rolling Stone replied, The strangest thing I tried to snort? My father. I snorted my father. He was cremated and I couldn't resist grinding him up with a little bit of blow. He went down pretty well and I'm still alive. Years later, Keith gave another version. The box and his father ashes lied buried under a ash oak tree. No snorting had taken place. Then, still later, Richards began circulating the story once again. So, what's the verdict here? I guess we're in for unknown. Personally, I think the story is bullshit. Like when Paul McCartney kept saying that a Beatles reunion might have been possible. McCartney did that to get attention from the press close to his own record releases. It must be the same thing here. But if you disagree, feel free to comment and give me a piece of your mind. Another drug-related story. You were kind of expecting that, given the focus of this video, right? Around 1978-1979, Keith Richards decided to clean up completely. To do that, without any withdrawal symptom, or to get rid of all drug-related health problems, it depends on who's telling the story, Keith Richards got himself into a Swiss hospital. The aim was to get an experimental procedure, a complete blood transfusion. The doctor substituted Keith's blood with that of other people, making him drug-free and healthy again. If you believe this story, we need to talk about a piece of land I'm selling down in Florida. For a start, there is no source that confirms any part of this story as far as I know. But even if Keith Richards himself came out and assured me personally that it was all gold, I would still believe this is false. Come on, this is utter nonsense. That procedure is quite rare, used to treat severe blood loss. And almost all the time, the doctors give you the blood or the components you need. They don't just switch your blood with somebody else's. The wildest claim about Keith Richards, believe it or not, is that he spent days without sleep. The record was set in 1978. According to data, Richards went on without sleep for nine days. In fact, he used five of those to record his parts for Before They Make Me Run for the Some Girls album. In his autobiography, Life, Keats states, one engineer would flop under the desk and have a kip and I'd put the other one in and keep going. Richards was not new to this kind of feat. I remember laughing out loud when reading his recollection of the exile on Main Street recording sessions. At some point, the engineers complained they were too tired to continue. They had gone without sleep for more than 24 hours. Good old Keith showed his heart of gold. He allowed the poor fellows to get a rest. But only for two or three hours, there was work to do. The engineers stumbled on the French Riviera and had a nap on a beach. So, given the amount of testimonies and Keith's cocaine intake, we can all agree this one is 100% true. Anyhow, the nine day sleepless spell finally ended when Richards fell asleep standing up. I was just putting another cassette back on the shelf 
and I was feeling great and I turned around and fell asleep. I fell against the edge of a speaker, woke up in a pool of blood wondering, is that claret? Don't do this at home, kids. In 1989, the Rolling Stones were due to film one show of the Steel Wheels tour for a pay-per-view cable network. The only suitable venue the management could find was the Plaza Hotel and Casino in Atlantic City. The problem was that Keith Richards couldn't stand the venue owner, Donald Trump. <laughs> Everyone in the band knew this. Everyone knew that Keith wouldn't have taken the choice of venue well. Band manager Michael Cole tried to arrange things with Richards. Without the guitarist, there would have been no show. The Rolling Stones couldn't pass this lucrative chance up and pay the plaza on top of that. Cole offered a compromise. Trump wouldn't be at the hotel and Keith would be on the stage. Then Donald showed up on the evening of the concert trying to be in the VIP section and meet the band. The news didn't go well with Keith, he pulled out a knife and slammed it on the table. Then it turned to Cole. What do I have to do to get rid of the man? Magically, Trump left the building soon afterwards. This story does seem like an urban myth, but years later Richards pulled out a knife and threatened to stab Slash unless he agreed Richards was a better guitarist. Keith also greeted Hunter S. Thompson with a baton when the two met for an interview. You can actually see that. It's 2 minutes 9 seconds into the video linked in the description. I guess the Donald Trump story is also true then. Did Chuck Berry punch Keith Richards in the face? Why? One evening Keith went backstage after a Barry's gig in New York. He wanted to greet his idol, the man who inspired him to pick up the guitar to begin with. So Richards entered Barry's dressing room and there it was, Chuck Berry's guitar lying there in its open case, the temptation was too much. Keith stepped forward and picked the guitar up for a strum. Right then, Barry walked into the room and swung a punch at Richards. The result? A black left eye. Years later, Keith recalled the episode during the Jimmy Fallon's The Tonight Show. He called the punch one of Chuck's biggest hits. Elsewhere, Keith commented, if I walk into my dressing room and saw somebody fiddling with my axe, it would be perfectly alright to suck them, you know? I just got caught. Being a guitarist myself, I know that touching another man's guitar without permission is one of the worst offenses you can do. Is that the same for women? I don't know, but I guess this is another true story. So we have three true stories, one false one and one that is at least disputable, not too bad. If you want to listen to an even wilder story, check out my video about how the Rolling Stones got swindled out of their rights by their business manager, the infamous Alan Klein. The link is in this video's description. This media top patterns was Simon Mas. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you want to get more videos of a higher quality, that is. If you didn't like it, drop me a line and tell me how I can improve. See you later for more music related content. For the moment, stay cool and keep your top hat on. Bye! Simon Mas, music you love!